Ever since the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill, legalizing farming hemp across the United States, medicinal hemp and CBD has been the most popular type of hemp to farm. However, industrial hemp, which is hemp grown for its raw materials, is slowly rising in popularity, and once it becomes widely adopted, will be able to challenge the status quo for multiple industries, all the while hopefully lowering water, land, and pesticide usage, as well as decreasing the carbon footprint and costs for these products. So let's take a look today at hemp bass fiber, which is the most commercially farmed industrial hemp material. Located on the outer layer of the hemp stalk, hemp fiber is easy to separate from the woody core and when dried, is a textile powerhouse. Hi, I'm Lawrence Serban, and I am the president and owner of Hemp Traders. Uh, we have been around since 1994, and we are the largest supplier of hemp textiles and hemp fiber products in the country. Hemp has the benefit of being, uh, as I say, if we compare it to cotton, it's a stronger uh, fiber. Uh, you also get a lot more fiber per acre when you're growing hemp, and it also uses about 20% less water. Uh, it will never be a total replacement for cotton because the qualities are different, but it can certainly be used as a replacement for flax and linen. And then we have a lot of the fabrics are hemp cotton blends, where we're using, uh, combining the good qualities of both of the fibers. Uh, as I mentioned, it's very strong uses less water, it's more durable, has virtually no stretch, and it's also a very porous fiber. When it's used in clothes, uh, it's very comfortable, it's extremely breathable, and it prevents the growth of anaerobic bacteria, and since it is a natural product, at the end of its life cycle, it's completely biodegradable. So what we have right here, this is raw hemp fiber. Now if you pick it up, and this is kind of a raw fiber right off the plant, and it's not even that good. You can see little bits of herd uh, in it. But when we want to do textiles, we have to process the hemp fiber. Usually it's boiled in sodium hydroxide, which is also known as lye. When we do that, we get this product here. This is referred to as degummed hemp fiber. And you can see now it's almost like cotton and all the fibers have been separated from each other. If you were to take this fiber and begin to comb it, so they're all going in one direction and begin to draw out, then you're going to have a product called hemp sliver. You can see it right here. It almost looks like a horse tail. Uh, these are all the fibers all in one direction. And if you were to take these, a little bit of it, and you put it in a, uh, a spinning machine, it will actually, it will spin it, and this is exactly how you get hemp yarn, which is what we have right here, the hemp yarn that we get. And then from hemp yarn, it will then be woven or spun, and you're going to get all the various textiles. You can see all the different hemp fabrics we're able to make. Hemp is very versatile. We're able to get different fabrics from knit fabrics over here. Uh, these are hemp denims, uh, hemp specialty weaves, uh, hemp blended with cotton right here. We call this hemp muslin. Then, of course, we have our 100% hemp fabrics. Anything from this very, very lightweight 2.6 ounce, 100% hemp linen type fabric. Two, on the other end, we can come over here and we can get a very heavy type of hemp canvas fabric. This is actually uh, 20 ounces square yard. 20 minutes away, a stone's throw away from Disneyland, is a small business that focuses on hemp made products specifically because of the benefits they provide. My name is uh, Jesse Clymer. I'm the owner of Hemp Authority located here in Orange County, California. Uh, we're a small business selling and making everything that can be made from hemp. So textiles, food products, beauty products, paper products, just trying to show off all the opportunities that hemp has and all the different products we can sell. 
when we're talking about reasons to use hemp as a more eco-friendly alternative, a, a reusable coffee filter is a great example of changing your lifestyle in a little way to really cut down on that waste and use. If you're using a throwaway coffee filter every day, you're throwing away 350 some odd coffee filters a year, that's stacking up over time. And there's no reason for it. That's a product that we've been ingrained to be able to use and throw away. That's just not good for the environment. And there's no reason. So this is a hemp shirt. It's made out of 55% hemp, 45% cotton. Uh, it's used for a hemp cotton blend because cotton still gives you the softness. Cotton is still a good natural material to be able to use where hemp's giving you that strength and that durability. So when you combine shirts that are hemp and cotton blend, you have a shirt that's gonna last longer and be stronger with the hemp while also being softer and, and still feel good to wear with the cotton. So that's really why you wanna look for a blend of both because it gives you the best of both worlds while still being a blend of natural materials. You, you wanna stay away from anything that has a blend that involves rayon, nylon, things like that. Those are all oil-based fabrics and those aren't gonna be great for the environment and those can lead to microplastics and lead to all sorts of other problems. Building the infrastructure to produce hemp textiles isn't going to be easy though, as the previous prohibition on hemp not only means that the infrastructure will need to be built from the ground up, but also because the regulations in place due to the federal ban on cannabis makes it hard on farmers to justify switching to industrial hemp. There's a few different hurdles. Uh, one, we're still hindered quite a bit by what I would call either still being illegal or in areas where it hasn't been legalized, we're seeing a lot of overregulation where they're treating the grain and fiber crops as if you were growing marijuana. So uh, you have to still get a uh, registration or a permit in order to grow it. You need to have testing. Sometimes people have to undergo a uh, background check when you're growing it. And all of these things can add up uh, and make it difficult for it's expensive for the farmer to grow. Uh, another problem is the infrastructure where there's not a lot of infrastructure needed for flour or for grain. You do need an infrastructure for the fiber and that once it's hard, uh, grown and harvested, you need an ability to decorticate the hemp stalks. That is separate the bark fiber from the herd fiber. And that would require uh, expensive equipment or if it's a plant, it could, might be a multi-million dollar plant in order to put it together or the other option is to have farm equipment that might be able to harvest as it's being cut down. And it's still so new that farmers don't want to grow unless they have a buyer or somebody who can process it. And processors kind of don't want to invest in the equipment unless they have enough farmers growing it to make it worth their while. So we're kind of in between a rock and a hard spot. But the ball is slowly moving, with farms such as the Riverdale Hemp Factory in Central California that had their first industrial hemp harvest last year and are developing modern tools to harvest and process industrial hemp more efficiently. Clothing companies such as Patagonia are also recognizing the environmental and physical benefits hemp fabric provides, recently releasing multiple collections of hemp made products. Hemp fiber is still just one part of the hemp plant, and even though it's the most widely used part of the plant, well, other than the cannabinoid rich flowers, the woody core, seeds, and even leaves can be used for a variety of products, which we'll cover more next time.